How to legally avoid estate tax. Now, I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, I don't need to worry about estate tax. I'm not rich. You're making a mistake. I'm telling you right now. Now, right now, the federal government, the estate tax is, is just, you don't have to worry about it. The vast majority of us, unless you have uh, assets over $10 million, is just not something to worry about. Now, assets include everything you own, which includes life insurance. If you own the insurance and you are the insured, as I am, I own my life insurance, I am the insured. At my death, that life insurance pays out to the beneficiary, which is my wife, Charlotte. All right. So Charlotte is the beneficiary. I am the owner and I am the insured. That way you avoid what's called the unholy trinity of a different owner, a different insured, and a different beneficiary. I've done other videos on that. We won't get into that here. But anyway, at my death, because I am the insured, the life insurance pays out. The name of the insured is now dead. All right. That is me. It pays out to who? It pays out to my estate because I am the owner. Now, ultimately, it's going to find its way to the beneficiary, Charlotte, in a matter of days. But ultimately, but initially, it goes to my estate because Josh is the owner. Josh is the insured at my death. The, the, as, the, as the insured, it pays out to the owner, which is Josh, but it's not him. It's his estate, and that'll be transferred to uh, the beneficiary, in this case, my wife. So that is part of your taxable estate. I just cannot stress this enough. Or part of your estate, not taxable necessarily. We'll get in that. I cannot stress this enough. Life insurance, if you are the owner, is part of your estate. Anything you own is part of your estate. Intellectual property, part of your estate. Baseball card collection, part of your estate. You name it, it is part of your estate. A fourth ownership in a farm from grandma, part of your estate. And if you're subject to estate tax, I'm telling you right now, the, uh, the estate for which you owe tax or the, the state or the entity for which you owe estate tax is going to want to get their money, which means they're going to need assessments, appraisals, the whole thing. It doesn't clear that quickly if you are subject to estate tax. It just does not. On top of that, if you name as a beneficiary in your will, we're going to name uh, you know, Salvation Army. I give 10% of my estate to Salvation Army at my death. All right, well, how does Salvation Army know if they're truly getting 10%? They're going to do an assessment. They're going to do an appraisal. And who is responsible for making sure that Salvation Army gets their right assessment and appraisal? It's the Attorney General of your state. It won't be that guy specifically, but it'll be the office. How do I know this? Because I actually had a lunch meeting eh, 10 years ago with a pretty prominent estate planning attorney in Oyster Bay, New York. I'll never forget, we're sitting over this. He uh, was a membership of a big golf uh, concern older gentleman, uh, retired Marine, and I was just looking over the water. Uh, Billy Joel's house was right there, and he was telling me he used to write for Trust in the States magazines. Uh, he, he knew some of the most prominent investors, and if I said who they were, you would know who they were, and I won't. Uh, so this guy knew his stuff, and he said, look, I'm just telling you, when you're doing estate planning analysis, as you should not be engaging in legal practice, Josh, I don't understand, but he said you definitely need to know what people are doing so that way you can advise them to seek proper counsel and the one thing he told me, he goes, look, if someone is leaving a charitable concern, a percentage of their estate uh, <laughs> upon their death, that charitable concern is going to want a full accounting for the total estate to make sure they're getting such a percentage. So if 10% of the estate, well, you can look around here. I got a bunch of stuff in here. How much is this worth? I don't know. It might be 100, 200,000 bucks. I don't know. A bunch of weights, you know, a bunch of uh, solar uh, photovoltaic panels a bunch of electrical equipment, all kinds of stuff down here. Let's say it's worth a thousand bucks. If I leave 10% to uh, Salvation Army, they're going to want to make sure they get a hundred bucks and they're going to need to do an assessment and an appraisal. And as such, uh, if I if we don't do that, they you know the Attorney General could get involved of my state of Georgia here. So just keep that in mind. All right. So we've kind of give you a little tutorial on that. So we have assessments, appraisals, all that. If you have a significant estate that could be subject to estate tax. And again, from right now, the federal government's not a big deal. It's just not. Um, but the state governments are. We have Oregon. We have Massachusetts. Both have a million dollar exemptions, which means you can pass a million dollars at your death completely free of an estate tax. But anything above a million dollars will put it yourself into a taxable estate, which we're going to get into right now. So let's show you how this works. All right. The typical arrangement on, on estate planning is we have, we're going to say Josh and Charlotte. All right. So Josh and Charlotte. And we're going to use Minnesota because I was just working with a couple in Minnesota. 
and uh, and they have significant estate uh, tax potential. So we have Josh and Charlotte. Now in Minnesota, there is a three million dollar exemption. That means anything in your estate under $3 million is not subject to estate tax. Anything over $3 million is subject to estate tax as part of your taxable estate. So taxable estate, estate is anything over $3 million. For this. And then again, this is the state of Minnesota, okay? So $3 million exemption, if you have $4 million of, uh, of estate, $1 million is your taxable estate. That's what that means. I hope that makes sense. All right. So in this case, we're going to say both Josh and Charlotte, for simplicity, we have $6 million of net worth. That's everything combined. It doesn't matter. Just everything combined, $3 million, $6 million. bucks. We're going to say split down the middle. We both have uh, you know, $2 million in various IRAs. She's got $2 million. I got $2 million. We have a house that's worth $2 million. We're both on the deed, so the house is split up. That's a million on each side. So we both have... Uh, three million dollar estate okay so we both have three million dollars so what happens here is that the one thing I, I want to let me go into oh let's just go into this so what happens typically is most estate plans have I love you wills that means when I die I leave everything to Charlotte and then it goes to the kids so it goes boink boink all right when she dies she leaves everything to me and then it goes to the kids, boink, boink. That's called I love you will. That's pretty simple. I guarantee the vast majority of you will all have that right now, which I do. All right, that's fine as long as you're not subject to an estate tax, as long as you don't have any taxable estate. In this case, that's not fine. So remember, we have a $3 million exemption. And so what you can see right now is when I die, well, I only have $3 million in my estate. So my estate is not subject to estate tax. I have no taxable estate. You understand that? Does that make sense? I got $3 million, a $3 million exemption. I have no taxable estate. Charlotte's got $3 million in her estate. There's a $3 million exemption. There's no taxable estate to her. Unfortunately, with spouses, married couples, what happens is there's an unlimited exemption. Bill Gates <coughs> could leave $100 billion to old Melinda. None of that is subject to estate tax because there's an unlimited spousal ex exemption. It's not $3 million. It's unlimited. Bill Gates leaves everything to old Melinda. Melinda gets it to completely estate tax free. Uh, that's, that's just what it is. So in this case, if I die first with the I love you will, I leave my $3 million to Charlotte, which is added to her $3 million. Now, again, that's not taxable because of the unlimited spousal exemption. And so now we have $3 million plus $3 million, and now she has a $6 million dollar a state. All right. Now, what happens is a lot of times is that money will grow. We're not going to assume any growth here. We, we won't. We'll just say, oh, you want to go? All right. Good boy. We're just going to say that six. Pablo. Pablo. Oh boy. Come here. That's six million dollar state. She dies. Well, she has a three million dollar exemption, which leaves her estate, a taxable estate at three million taxable estate estate. All right, so she has a $3 million taxable estate. So nothing when I died, but that adds to her estate. And when she dies, she has uh, $6 million, which means $3 million is taxable and $3 million is, uh, is the exemption. And if we just use a simple 10% tax rate, I don't know what it is in Minnesota, that's a $300,000 estate tax. And usually do within 90 days of date of death, or maybe 100 days. It depends on the state, but it's due pretty quickly. And if that's on real estate, how are you going to pay the estate tax? <laughs> you got to sell something for sure. So that's another problem. If that's an IRA, how do you pay the estate tax? You got to sell IRA assets, pay the income tax on IRA assets, and then turn around and pay the estate tax. I don't want to get all that right here. But anyway, so that's what happens here a lot of times. The I love you will, it, it doesn't take advantage of both exemptions we have your wasted an exemption i have wasted my three million dollar exemption because i just transferred over to charlotte and when she dies she only has three million dollars where if i would have not used uh transfer to her uh, i could have used my own exemption and none of our uh, estate would have been subject to income tax or st estate tax so let me show you how this works that's called a wasted exemption josh has wasted exemption by giving everything to charlotte and we don't want that to happen. So we're going to show you how this works instead. 
I think you probably were getting it when I was doing initially the front end of this, and we'll go into this. So I'm gonna show, oops, I'll make sure. This is the second time I did this video, first time everything collapsed on me. All right, so we have Josh, three million, all right. Then we got old Charlotte, three million. So you can see, what we wanna do is make sure that we both use our exemptions, our $3 million exemption. So if we use $3 million exemption, I got zero taxable estate. She uses her $3 million exemption. We got zero taxable estate. Now, how do we use our $3 million exemption? Well, I could immediately say, I'm gonna give this money to the kids if I want. So I leave Charlotte with three million bucks, the kids get three million bucks, and there is no estate tax whatsoever. So that passes three million bucks to the kids. Charlotte still has her three million bucks. We have three million bucks to the kids. We save $300,000 in estate tax. So one thing I can immediately do. A lot of people say, yeah, I don't know if I wanna do that. So what they do instead is they, instead of giving it directly to the kids, they open up what's called a bypass trust and fund it with that $3 million. So we're gonna use our exemption at the death of me, and I'm gonna fund this bypass trust to benefit Charlotte. Because the issue is, we don't wanna give directly to the kids because now the kids are just as wealthy as my wife, and I wanna make sure that she's not a pauper, if that makes sense. I want her to still have access to the money. So what I'm gonna do is at my death, I'm gonna open a bypass trust, for that way Charlotte has access to assets for health, education, maintenance, and support. Health, education, maintenance, support. Now, she can go into this and take the principal out uh, to some degree. Now, she won't be the trustee. You'll have to name another trustee, but that's that's part of estate planning. But anyway, for a, if she needs a new car, well, that's health, education, maintenance, and support. If she needs to go to the, uh, the doctor to get, I don't know, freaking whatever, the surgery, that's health. If she needs to uh, pay for schools, that's education, maintenance, and support are very liberal and fluid, as a matter of fact. So basically, if Charlotte is used to living off 100000 a year when I'm alive, and now all of a sudden she wants to live off a million dollars a year by tapping into the trust, that's not going to fly because that's not maintaining her education, health, maintenance, and support. That's increasing her health, education, maintenance, and support. They don't want to do that. They just want to say, look, maintain your current lifestyle. So if it's $50,000 a year that she can get off that for health, education, maintenance, support, she should be able to do that. Now, I'm not a state planning attorney. I certainly don't represent clients in that regard. You'd have to see proper counsel. But because she has access to health, education, maintenance, support, she this right here, my money that I put into that bypass trust serves two purposes. A, I take advantage of my estate tax exclusion. So that means my $3 million is still staying in the family, for sure. B, I'm still serving Charlotte. Even though she doesn't own it, she still has access to it to some regard. If we Any income that's derived off here can go to Charlotte. I mean, there's all kinds of different things you can do in these bypass trusts. At the end of the day, though, she still has access, not to the entirety of the principal. She still has access to health, education, maintenance, and support, all right? And... When she dies, it goes directly to the beneficiaries, which would probably be the kids, if that makes sense, tax-free. So she has access to income from it. At her death, it goes to the kids, tax-free, all right? And then when she dies, this goes to the kids. It depends on the size of her estate here, tax-free, maybe. But either way, she's still taking advantage of this $3 million exemption. And that's a freaking wonderful strategy that we haven't really had to do that much lately uh, in the last probably 10 years because there isn't a federal estate tax of any concern right now. For most people, it just is not a big deal. But uh, for, for states, Minnesota, Massachusetts, Oregon come to mind, but you know anything in the Northeast, uh, New York, uh, Maryland has got both an estate and an inheritance tax. Uh, Washington, Oregon, we talked about, I can't remember if Minnesota, not Minnesota, uh, I can't remember if Wisconsin, other state, Pennsylvania has an inheritance tax. Kentucky has an inheritance tax. Inheritance taxes and estate tax are different. That's just, there's just different. So this is not applicable to inheritance tax. It's only applicable to estate tax. But if you live in any state that has an estate tax, or if, if Biden wins and they lower the estate tax to what it used to be, 675000 bucks, I don't expect anyone to do that. But let's just say they, uh, I think Bernie wanted a $2 million estate tax 
you would need to be worried, especially if you have, uh, if you live in the Northeast and you have some life insurance, you could easily find yourself above the $2 million exemption. But in Minnesota here, if you just leave everything to the surviving spouse, now $3 million of your estate is subject to estate tax, and I'm just using 10%, uh, 10% that's $300,000 of taxes. All right. However, if you set up this bypass trust, you're not leaving Charlotte without. She still has access to it. She can't go in there and take a million dollars out in which to freaking sniff up her nose, but she has access to health, education, maintenance, and support. How that is determined is between you and your attorney to figure out, but it's pretty fluid, pretty liberal. So as long as she's not going crazy with her expenditures and just maintaining her current level of consumption, she's fine. On top of that, she still uses her own exemption. So when she dies, that goes to the kids tax-free, and then the beneficiaries will be the children of this, this what's called the contingent beneficiaries. So when the trust is dissolved because she dies, uh, she was able to have access to it when the trust dissolves, then that money also goes to the kids tax-free as well. It's a wonderful, completely legal. This is commonplace stuff in estate planning. Again, do not overlook your life insurance. If you have a large life insurance policy, you need to be understanding this because that could really swamp your taxes when it comes to estate tax. Love to hear your thoughts, questions, concerns. Put them in the show notes. All right, thanks now.